Okay, let's get off the uh, worksheet from yesterday. I know the 7172 stuff I helped a few people with. Um, you're definitely welcome to, uh, you know, not share your answers, but if, if I don't go over one you had a question on, feel free to ask someone. I know I helped some people in, in fourth and fifth hour yesterday. But remember that, um, you know, the front side is um, velocity stuff. To find a velocity equals zero is when something stopped. Moving to the left is when it's negative. Moving to the right is uh, if the velocity is positive. And the whole displacement ending position, I'm going to go over that when we talk about the review today, but it's all about like the new position. You take where it started plus how far it moved, which is the integral, which is the area under the curve. Uh, but mostly I want to kind of help you set up some of the ones on the back here. Remember to find the area of the shaded region. You just are doing top minus bottom or, or right minus left uh, with your bounds. Number 10 seemed to be the um, one I helped the most people with, so I thought I would look at that one. Maybe if I can get my smart board to work. Oh my goodness, not responsive. Alright. <coughs> oh my gosh, please work. <coughs> Remember that when you see a y squared, that means you're going to want to do this in terms of y. Um, if you solve that top one for x, you would get x equals y squared minus 6. Um, some people solve those for y and graph them on their calculator, which works. Just remember that it's plus or minus the square root. But again, you don't have to make a perfect graph here. If you just know that y squared minus 6 is going to be a parabola that looks something like this, maybe, opening, definitely opening to the right, y plus 36 is going to be a line going through something like this, again, very roughly speaking, which means I can tell from that graph that my integral should be y plus 36 minus y squared and minus 6 becomes plus 6. The other thing that we need here is our bounds. And again, if you graph it, you can find the bounds. But uh, remember, you can also just set them equal to each other. So you could say y squared minus 6 equals y plus 36. So if you subtract y over and you subtract 36 over, factor that into y minus 7, y plus 6, so you get y equals 7 and y equals negative 6. And then that's not bad to integrate. Uh, remember, area, no squaring, no pi, you're just finding area. Um, there's a whole lot of computation. My advice is if I let you use a calculator, let the calculator do the computation for you, squaring and cubing and all of that. Because the more stuff you type in your calculator, the more likely that the negative mistake should happen, might happen. Uh, if I rewrote this as negative y squared plus y plus 42, so when you integrate that, I think you get that from negative 6 to 7. And then it's all about typing that in your calculator. Um, again, I just want to show you what I type in my calculator is I say negative 7 cubed over 3 plus 7 squared, or I mean, I guess I know that 7 squared is 49, but honestly, I didn't even do that. 7 squared over 2 plus 42 times 7 minus parentheses negative of negative y cubed. I guess I did kind of deal with those negatives. That's going to just become 6 cubed over 3 because those negatives are going to cancel. Uh, plus negative 6 squared, um, I know that's going to be a positive number. I think I went ahead and wrote that as 36 over 2, plus 42 times 6. And honestly, I have this on my paper because I typed that in my calculator all at once just like that. Negative 7 cubed divided by 3, plus 7 squared divided by 2, plus 42 times 7, minus parentheses, type all that in, and it gave me an answer of 2197 over 6. Um, so again, your calculator can, can help you a lot on those. Okay?
on the back side, uh, the seven four, seven three worksheet. Um, again, number two might have given you some trouble because of being in terms of why. Again, you can draw a picture if you want, but uh, Kimberly had a great thought about it. Of she wasn't even going to draw a picture because she knew it was in terms of why. She knew there was only one function, so there's not going to be a whole. So she just said we could just square that function and go from zero to pi halves, which will definitely work on that. Uh, there's no hole on one or two, uh, and I think on one and two you should get the same answer. And then three and four, both of those have holes. Um, again, I helped some kids in Calc Lab yesterday, so you should be able to talk to them maybe if you need some help setting those up. I want to give you time to work on the chapter review, so I'm not going to do any more of that. I want you to turn this in. If you're still finishing some stuff up, please stop what you're doing, take some notes over what I'm going to give you over the chapter review, and then you can just turn this in before you leave. So just make sure before you leave this hour, not the end of the day, but this hour, that you turn that worksheet in um, to the substitute so that I'll have that to uh, give you some points on. Hopefully I'll stop by today and pick it up so I can give it back to you. Okay, let's talk about the test. I kind of broke this up by section. Remember, we only did three sections because I skipped seven five. Um, seven one was the front side of that worksheet, which I know that some people um, have forgotten about. But remember that to find when the velocity stops is when the velocity equals zero. Moving to the left is when your velocity is less than zero. And moving to the right is when your velocity is greater than zero. Remember that total distance traveled. Uh, if you're going from an interval from A to B is area under the curve or the integral from A to B of the absolute value of the velocity function. If they give you a graph um, like the first part on the, the first picture on the worksheet with areas, you just take the absolute value of each one. Uh, if they give you a function, you have to break it up at the zeros and uh, do the integral for each one. If it's like the bottom one on the front of the worksheet and you actually have to calculate the area using geometry, you just take the absolute value of each area. Remember displacement is how far it traveled from time A to time B. So displacement is just the integral from A to B of the velocity function. Again, that could be a function, that could be a graph that you have to compute the areas, that could be a graph where the area is already written in. And remember to find a new position or to find an ending position, you still compute the displacement, but you have to add in the initial value that they give you in the problem. And so again, a big part of that, that's all over the AP test, um, a big part is understanding what the question's asking. 7-2 was like the middle of the worksheet. Uh, remember that area between two curves Pay attention to whether you're doing that with respect to x or respect to y. Respect to x, remember that we do top minus bottom. And with respect to y, we do right minus left. Left, if I can spell that. Uh, and just remember that you're taking the integral of whatever the area would be uh, on those. So look at the pictures to help you on that. And then the only other thing on um, this test is volume over dis with using disks and washers. Again, look at the graph, whether you're graphing it by hand or you're graphing it with a calculator. Uh, figure out if there's a hole. If there's no hole, that would be the disk method. And remember that that's just pi, the integral from A to B of the radius squared. Or it could be in terms of y. Pay attention to how you're rotating that as well. If there's a hole in it, remember that you have to take the outer radius squared, which we call big R, minus the inner radius squared. Draw the pictures, draw the rectangles, um, and look at those when you're doing that. What else? I threw that on here. Remember that I also could give you something where we're revolving with every cross section being a square. Um, or maybe something else, but for the most part, squares are what we think of there. 
And remember, with the squares, you don't have a pi, and a square is just side squared. So if it was a square, it would just be like the side squared dx, which is kind of just like the disk method, except for you don't put pi in it. All right, because we didn't do 7, 5, I have cut questions off of this test, which means there's not a lot of questions on this test which means the setup and the working out of these problems are definitely going to be worth a good amount of points. Uh, definitely not 10 questions, maybe like 7 or 8 questions. I forget, 7 or 8 questions. Yes. Um, I put that you can start at 8 a.m. Uh, I know the breakfast is tomorrow, um, but it also is a pride time morning tomorrow. So I would say we need to try to get down here by 8.10 and start that uh, test as close to that time. Uh, also, don't forget that all of your homework is due tomorrow, including that worksheet from yesterday that we went over, the one that's three questions, and also the um, review that I'm going to give you today. This is your review. Notice it's not very many questions, but I tried to go through and, and pick this, the stuff that you're going to see. Definitely go through other old homework, old notes, old worksheets if you want to get some extra problems to uh, work on. Okay, so work on this for the rest of the time, um, and I will be here tomorrow morning at the breakfast, so come on down and eat some pancakes and let's do some calculus.